All right, ladies and gentlemen, the other day I did a video about the killing of William Shane Jones in 1999 by now federally indicted Mike Cox. And I gave some details of the story. However, I received more information since that time. And during the video, I stated that Mike Cox and Mr. Shane Jones was the only two at the scene. However, uh, because of that video, I received some new information that Mike Cox was not the only one at the scene. There was another passenger in the car. And I spoke with that passenger. And that passenger, his name is Jamie Scott. And he is willing to tell you, give you a eyewitness testimony of how Mike Cox shot Mr. William Shane Jones in cold blood. Now, I did retrieve the death certificate, as you can see here. Uh, his death says a gunshot wound to the right chest. And if you go further down, I don't know if you can see it, but the finding of his death is ruled as a homicide. So that totally contradicts the news article that I read the other day. You can go back and watch that video. But I'm going to let Mr. Uh, Jamie Scott tell y'all the story real quick. I'm going to get him on the line so you can hear his firsthand account on the killing, the murder of his best friend, Mr. William Shane Jones. How you doing, Mr. Scott? I'm all right. How are you, sir? Pretty good, pretty good. So we live on the air right now. I've already given the people a background, um, you know, outlook on how we came together, how I found you. And so I just want you to tell them a little bit about what you told me about that night, uh, because you was actually there at the scene when Mike Cox killed uh, your friend at the time, Mr. William Shane Jones, correct? Yes, all right, so tell, tell tell me what you know happened that night as far as the police stop. Well, we'd gone to the Belfast Quick Mart they used to take home. And when we left, we were coming back towards Stony Creek. And Shane looked in the mirror and said, I believe that's the law behind us. And when he did that, he touched the yellow line just because he got nervous. You know what I'm saying? And uh -huh. Mike turned his blue lights on and we pulled into the Stony Creek store. And Shane was like, I'm not going to jail tonight. And he jumped out and ran. Mike jumped out and ran behind him. They went around the little house there beside the Stony Creek store. And Shane fell in the ditch as they come back around the back of the house. And Mike jumped on top of him in the ditch and stood up over him and pulled his pistol, put his flash out on top of him and shot him. Shane was laying in the bottom of the ditch, couldn't do anything. And so at that time, I guess you, you were still in the car or had you gotten out of the car? I had got out of the car and started towards him, and then he cornered the pistol away, and I stuck my hands up in there. Oh, okay. So after he shot him, then, then what did he do? He just stood over him, and by that time, all the other cars was coming in, all the other deputies. And Sean Harris got me, put me in handcuffs, and put me in the back of the car. Okay, and then they just but I, they but just I saw the fire come out of the end of his barrel. I mean, it was just like what you see on TV. And how old, how old were you at the time? Twelve, thirty-nine. Oh, you was about thirty-nine. Twenty-nine. Twenty-nine. Okay, and Shane was like twenty-five. Ninety-nine. Yeah, I was twenty-nine. Okay. So um, so after after they shot, like, did they did 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 they hurry up and try to get him to the hospital, or or what happened after you know, he was that, shot? That's the thing. The rescue truck got there. There was so many patrol cars in the way. They had to move the patrol car out of the way to put him in the rescue truck. And then the sheriff, Kerry Winters, he got in the back of the truck with him and stood there and talked for, I, mean, I know it was five or ten minutes before they ever even tried to move him to get the rescue truck out of the way. If they had to held him up and went on went to the hospital, he might still be here. And so when did he die on the way to the hospital or did he die at the hospital? Or do you remember? See, see, they never told me nothing. See, they took me to the to the sheriff's department and they started questioning me about what was going on and what happened. And they never told me anything until right there at the last, one of the deputies came in there and said something to me about his daddy wearing a a, um, a fly, fly jacket because they had a bunch of patches on it. Uh -huh. Then he was at the hospital and I said, well, how's Shane doing? He said, you don't know. 
And I said, no, he said, he died. And I about fell on my knees, man. I got weak on my knees. Okay. And they didn't ever tell me nothing until right then. Okay, so then at, after that happened, like, like what did like did they ever question you? Like, did the SBI ever? Because uh, because the article I read said the SBI is investigating the case. Did they ever no, come never, talk to you about what happened? I never talked to them. I talked to, I guess it was the county lawyer about it when they were talking because they wanted to know my side of the story. And I went there told them. I told them about the. You know, sheriff letters going and stand in the ambulance and making it stay there longer. I thought about all the cars being there. And there was nothing ever said about it after that. So did did, did the police ever like try to try to intimidate you about it? They just asked me a bunch of questions about it, but I mean I hadn't done nothing. He was driving my car because I didn't have a driver's license. Okay. And and you know, I had had done nothing wrong. And the one was really, I mean, all he done was just touch the yellow line. Because he got nervous because he thought the law was behind him. And he was like, was he a big guy too? No, he's a little bitty fellow. Oh, he, he oh he wasn't big at the time. No. Okay. And so there wasn't no like scuffle or like like because in the article they was like Mike Cox had bruises on his face and and stuff like that. I never saw Shane hit him. I saw him run around behind the back of the house and trip over it and it did. And my got on top of him. And then shined his flashlight on him and just shot. Oh, his pistol put his flashlight on top of him and shot him. I saw the fire come out of it in the barrel. And so what did that um so so what what did they ever do to him? Like did they ever like like um arrest him or, or was he was he put on leave or or how long, you know, was was he back in like like on the force? He never was dismissed or anything for us. I know him, and I know they put him on the desk or whatever they do while they investigate a little bit, but they just said there were no charges that he was he done what he was supposed to do. And in my opinion, he did not. I mean, the man was laid in the bottom of the ditch. How could he fight somebody laying in the bottom of the ditch? You can't swing. You can't draw your arms or fist back. And so pretty much you, you, you think he just killed him in cold blood. Yes, I definitely think that. I think he wanted to make a name for himself in the sheriff's department. And after that, like, um, because I, I, I know you said after that, you said you didn't feel safe. No, I did not. So how I long? I the county state known about twelve years. How long? How long after the shooting did you move? I moved. I'm just thinking about let me get my dates right. So this was in 99. It took about 10 years for me to move, but I mean, I never really felt safe. You know what I'm saying? I mean, every time I got around the deputy, I always, I never wanted to be around any of them. Yeah. And so did you tell anybody else, like, what happened as far as, like, you know, friends and family or, you know, did you ever talk to anybody else or was you afraid to? No, I mean, my family knows exactly what happened. I mean, my daddy come and got me that night when they were they were going to put me home and when we crossed the railroad tracks around William Street, I met my daddy and I was like, oh, that's my daddy. And he realized that I was in the car with them and we all stopped and I got in the truck with him and went home with him. So he come up there to the scene and they wouldn't even tell him where I was, if I was all right or anything. They wouldn't tell him nothing. Well, it was chaos down there, man. I mean, they were, they were front of... Fifteen patrol cars in the yard. Yeah, and that was in the that, so that happened in the parking lot of the store or you or, or by a house. Of the store, of the store, the, the store parking lot was full of cars, and all them trees that's beside it between the store and the house were dirty. And I mean, that's you know, it was just a blank in the ditch. Okay, and so he ran and fell in the ditch, and Mike Mike Cox just pretty much shot him. Jumped on top of him. So there was another man that lived in the house. He lived on that porch. He was there on his back porch and saw a lot of it. Oh, yeah, did he, but did he ever say anything? They would never let us be together and talk. Okay. Okay. So is it is anything else you kind of remember the, the, the incident that sticks out? 
that's pretty much how it was. I mean, I couldn't, you know. Yeah. So why? It, it is short of it. I mean, you know. Why don't you think nobody talks about it now? You know, or, or, or you know, talked about it then? Well, I mean, things are different back then than what they are now. Uh huh. I mean, it won't all the people being so outspoken against the law like they are now. Okay. So pretty much everybody was just like, okay, you, you can't do nothing about it, basically. Right. And, exactly. And, and That's exactly what do. it was. They swam it right under the rug, and there was nothing you could do about it. Okay. Wow. All right. Well, I, I, I certainly appreciate you, you know, just sharing that story because, you know, the news article put it in a way like, you know, it, it was, you know, Mike Cox feared for his life and things of that nature. But it was it just... never got to the point he feared for his life. Wow. I so, feel for mine when he pointed the gun at me. So after you, so you when you started walking up, he pointed the gun at you. Right after he shot Shane, he pointed it at me, and I stuck both hands up in there. Wow. Okay. Well, I certainly appreciate you, man. I I give you a call, but I just wanted to, you know, not me tell it. I want to let you tell it because this this article sound, sounds different, you know, than what oh, yeah. you said. So. But I'm definitely on um, because, you know, somebody else told me that you were there as well. So I know it's true because, um, you know, you said I might I might just go and get get the police report. See if that see if they'll give me that. But um, I definitely appreciate you, uh, Jamie, and I and I give you a call back a little bit later. All right. Thank you, sir. All right. Thank you. All right. So there you have it. Uh, that is an eyewitness to uh, this incident. Once again, this is the news article. News article. Deputy shoots and kills a man during arrest attempt um, in the vacant lot near the intersection of Stony Creek and Pate Town Road. Jumped out. Car and fled on foot. Um, once again, Mike, he was dead upon arrival. He had died before he got to the hospital. Um, Sheriff Winders said his very good officer who was forced to use his weapon in self-defense. Now, this contradicts the eyewitness testimony of Mr. Jamie Scott. And so, um, once again, I have to ask the question, why has not this incident been brought up in the federal investigation that is ongoing uh, with Mike Cox? But also we must, you know, ask the question, why isn't it, ha hasn't anything been done or why wasn't anything done uh, to Mike Cox? Because as we see his behavior now, I think uh, this might have been the occurrence that set him on the path to feeling like he was untouchable and he could do anything that he liked. If this uh, incident had been checked, then we may not have be even talking about him now. But as we see, there's a, there was an elaborate cover-up, even not right now. As I mentioned in the earlier video, I scoured the internet looking for evidence of the situation and nothing came up. Uh, once again, I think apparently uh, the family uh, did reach a settlement uh, with the uh, sheriff department, which pretty much they had to admit wrongdoing. And so that's why, you know, there is not a lot of talk about this situation, but you know, now we have some 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 eyewitness evidence that contradicts um, this article uh, that that said that Mike Cox acted in self defense. Now, once again, I'm a, I'm going to bring you some more information on this article, uh, this this incident, the the investigation, and you know how it pretty much um, 
you know, just was swept under the rug by Sheriff Wayne Winders and also, you know, other people uh, in the occurrence. But once again, this is Richard Taylor. My number is 919-587-7782. If you have any more information uh, regarding this, please feel free uh, to call. Uh, peace and blessings.